guys, it's Haley and welcome back to another bookish video. So today we are going to be doing a reading vlog with two books of the same name. So I thought this was really interesting. I was just going through my Goodreads TBR and I realized two of the books that are on there are thrillers and they're both named I'll Never Tell. This one is YA and this one's adult. And I believe this one was actually nominated for a Goodreads Choice Award um, 2018, I think, or maybe 2019, I'm not quite sure. But this one's supposed to be really good. I just want to see by reading them both back to back if there are any similarities that you can tell just based simply off the title of a book. We are judging a book by its title today, basically. Okay, so the first one I'm going to read is I'll Never Tell by Katherine McKenzie. And this one, as I said, is an adult thriller. It's about a summer camp and a tragedy happened. A girl was found dead at the summer camp 20 years ago. And now, present day, 20 years to the future, all of the sons and daughters, all the children of the couple who owned the summer camp are coming back because their parents have passed away and they're trying to collect their inheritance. Um, they're kind of fighting over whether they should sell it or not. Over the course of them meeting up and having these discussions, family secrets are unveiled and things come up that uh, have to do with the girl who was dead, mm, probably murdered, <laughs> um, 20 years ago. And I believe that uh, the girl who was murdered was friends with the main perspective that we're following, which is Margot, who is the like middle, one of the middle daughters um, of this family. Uh, it was her best friend who came up dead. So the dead girl's named Amanda, the dead girl. Wow, that's a lovely way to put it. Uh, the dead girl's name is Amanda and her best friend was Margot. And now Margot's here and she doesn't know. She's kind of conflicted on whether they should sell the camp or not. And she's kind of arguing back and forth with her siblings who are Mark, Mary, Kate, and Liddy. So there's a lot of people to keep straight. I am a little over 50 pages in at this point and I'm still kind of feeling it out. I don't know how I feel about it yet. The one concrete thought I do have is that I do not like the character Mark. The one brother in the family is like getting on my nerves really bad, but I'm really enjoying the like summer camp kind of nostalgia kind of thing. Also it's set in Canada, so that's kind of cute and different. Really wish I would have known this was set, oh, I was gonna say set in a different continent for the reading rush, but it's not. Canada is definitely in North America. So, oops, um, but it's cool that it's in Canada. I really like that. Um, and it's kind of interesting to see how close Canadian summer camps are to American summer camp so kind of interesting and different I'm still waiting for like the thrills to kick in but I will definitely keep y'all posted and give you guys reading updates as I finish this book and then after that I will be picking up I'll Never Tell by Abigail Haas and this one is about a missing sister I think it kind of seems similar to Sadie I don't know if it will be tackling the same extremely dark themes as Sadie, but it gives me those kind of vibes. So if you like Sadie, stick around for the reading vlog of this one. But in the meantime, let me get a little bit further into I'll Never Tell and I will update you with more thoughts. Hello, I am about halfway through and I have a mixed thoughts. So I'm not going to give any spoilers in this reading vlog in case y'all want to pick up these books because they're not really widely talked about on booktube so I don't want to spoil them for anybody. Um, but yeah, I have mixed thoughts. So I feel like not much has happened even though I've read about 180 pages. I feel like basically 50 pages worth of action has taken place over almost 200 pages. So it's going pretty slow. I'm waiting for some action. It's very Agatha Christie-esque, but again, Agatha Christie's books are like 100 and something, 200 something pages. So this is like um, 
the length of a modern thriller, but with the pacing of an Agatha Christie. So I don't know, it's a little bit boring, but I don't hate it. Like I really enjoy the way that the characters are being developed. I really enjoy um, in particular Margot's character and Kate's character. I like both of them a lot. There's some LGBTQ representation which I really enjoy and yeah all the relationships are very complicated and it has a lot of family drama aspects so I like that but overall I don't know right now it's sitting at like a three star it's very average but hopefully when the twists are really coming in and packing a big punch it will get a little bit better and I will let you know if they do good morning guys so I actually got quite far into I'll Never Tell by Katherine McKenzie last night I only have about a hundred pages left so you'd think things would be wrapping up at this point, but alas, they are not. This is definitely um, a very slow burn mystery rather than a thriller. It's more like family drama, slow burn. If you like that, you will love this, but it's not super fast paced and thrilling um, like No Exit or Silent Patient, um, you know, like those kind of thrillers. I would definitely put it in the more slow burn category um, of mysteries. It kind of reminds me of The Guest List in a way, but I like The Guest List a lot better. Um, so here she is, I have 100 pages left. I will probably end up finishing her today. Uh, let me give you some more thoughts. I gotta set you down because my arm is hurting. Is this gonna work? I'm like squatting. Could this work? Can I just talk? You can see my whole apartment. Wow, okay. You know, I have a tripod, but I'm honestly just way too lazy to set it up right now. So <laughs> this is going to have to do, but yeah. Um, I'm liking the multiple perspectives a lot. I really like that in a thriller, but the perspective from Amanda, who, if you don't remember, that is the girl who actually did get murdered 20 years ago. It's very odd. Um, there's commentary and a perspective uh, from her, um, regarding times when she was dead, um, which is very odd to me. Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> and some of the plot twists seem to come from nowhere or like they happen and there was no lead up or like suspicion where it's like, oh, I almost missed that. Or like, oh, I thought that. Like it's none of that. It's just, it's very sudden. It comes from out of nowhere and then it's just kind of dropped immediately. It's like, oh my God, this crazy thing happened. Moving on, let me complain about my family some more. So I don't know, I'm, this is not my favorite thriller of all time, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but it's not bad enough where I wanna DNF it. Like I'm definitely still interested in the story. I just think it could have been executed a little bit better than this. Um, finally, in regards to the name of this book, I'll Never Tell, it is constantly, constantly referenced. It's like some people's last words, some people have it tattooed on them. Like these people are obsessed with the phrase, I'll never tell. So I'm very interested to see in the next book if that will be similar and if there's something about this phrase or this title where it's like very pertinent to the story. I don't know. Interesting to think about. Um, I will go ahead and finish this book and let you know my final thoughts and my final rating. While I read, I'm going to be feasting on some chocolate chip cookies that I made last night, which makes me so happy. Literally went to the gym this morning, showered, and what am I gonna do? Eat cookies for breakfast, yes. I just honestly love that for me, so really excited for that. <laughs> Okay, I'm about 50 pages from the end, so almost done. But I have to say, things are picking up a little bit, which is a good surprise. Also, these pages 
show like where everyone was on the night of the murder like by time it's like a cool little grid and I really like those pages it's really helpful for like keeping all the characters straight and all their stories straight and like if what they're saying like where they were like clashes from what the story actually said where they were so yeah I think that's really helpful and I feel a little bit better about this book now I know my check-in earlier was really negative but I feel a little bit better about it and I'm excited to find out who the murderer is and see if I'm right in my suspicions so I was right who is surprised at this point? My thriller predictions just keep getting better. <laughs> um, honestly, I don't know how to feel. Like, I don't even know what to say. Like, mm, okay. <laughs> so I'm finished with this book. The title had so much to do with the plot, the themes, the everything. Literally, it was like the final line of the whole book. So obviously this um, title was very important and like pertinent to the story and the author. So I'm hoping that we'll get to see a parallel of that in the next I'll Never Tell. Um, excited for that. But as for the ending of this book, I'm not really surprised. I predicted who the killer was pretty early on, probably about the 100, 150 page mark um, after I sort of got to know all of the players in the story. Um, the first like little over half of the book was slow. If you like Agatha Christie books, and you like a slow burn mystery and you like family drama, you will like this. It was just too, like I felt like it could have been said in so much less, so many less pages that I don't know. It was, there's just something holding me back from really, really enjoying this book. I, it, it was definitely like a fun little ride. I liked the nostalgia of like being at a camp. I liked the crazy family dynamics. I love family drama in a book, but I don't know, something about it in this particular instance was a little bit like stilted. Like the family drama was there, but it wasn't fully fleshed out. Um, I did like the majority of the characters. Some of them were kind of weird and their POVs kind of like ran together. They didn't seem very distinct from each other. So yeah, uh, overall, it was a pretty average thriller, maybe a little less than average because it was very, very predictable. And I do enjoy the occasional predictable thriller. I love Sherry Lapina's books, even though I always know <laughs> what's, uh, what the ending is going to be before I finish it. I just enjoy reading them because it's a fun little ride. It's always short and dramatic and just fun. It's like watching a horror movie you know exactly what's gonna happen but it's still just fun this was not as fun <laughs> because it was not thrilling in the slightest it was very mystery driven but that doesn't mean it was bad um i'm struggling with my rating i think i'm gonna go with a 2.5 star because if i'm saying three is like average then 2.5 is like a little less than average. And that's how I'm honestly feeling about this book. It wasn't bad though. I feel like some people would enjoy this and I don't wanna like convince you to not read this if it sounds interesting to you. It's definitely worth a read. But moving on, I do have high hopes for the next book. I'll Never Tell by Abigail Haas. Wow, so fun. We'll see if this title plays into the story as much as it did in this one. So basically what this book is about is, I thought it was a girl's sister turns up dead, but it's just her really close, like best friend turns up dead. Sounds remarkably familiar. We're following a girl whose best friend turned up dead. This girl, <laughs> her best friend 
is found brutally murdered and on a beach, I feel like. Yeah, in Aruba. Well, they were swimming and this happened in a lake. How weird is that? Literally similarities already, not only in the title, there's a dead girl found murdered on the shore of a body of water. That, that's, I feel like that's, that's not a coincidence. Like, I don't know, there's something there to me, I don't know. I feel like um, the main character that we're following uh, is suspected of murdering her best friend. She's like the prime suspect, so she goes about trying to figure out what actually happened so she can clear her name and kind of exonerate herself. So, it seems fun, short, YA. We'll see how it goes and I will update you once I have some thoughts about this. All right, I am about 100 pages in and I really, I'm enjoying it. It has that like YA kind of like immature voice that I usually try to avoid, uh, which is why I don't read a lot of YA. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's like the, it's high school and everything's crazy kind of voice. And like not all YA books have that. And I have a lot of YA favorites that don't have that voice, but this one definitely does. And I mean, it's fun. There's nothing wrong with that. This isn't going to be any kind of groundbreaking literature, that's for sure, but it's fun, it's cute. So basically what I'm gathering of the story so far is um, our main character, Anna, is in jail, arrested for murdering her best friend on their spring break in Aruba. And these are high schoolers, so they're like wild. And that's kind of fun to read about. It's also going really fast. Like I read those 100 pages in less than an hour. So I think this will be just a good, fast paced, fun time of a thriller. And right now, not much of the title has been like a big part of the book. So I don't know, maybe that was just the last one, but I will keep reading and let you know. Good morning. It has been a day already, and it's 6 a.m. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so basically I have a hole in my wall because a pipe burst. So I'm waiting for a plumber to come to my home at six in the morning, and then someone's gotta come repair my wall. Really excited about that. Here, I'll show you the hole. That's water seeping into my apartment. <laughs> Thank God, I'm really happy about it. It's gonna be a really fun time today. So yeah, basically I'm up at 6 a.m. waiting on a plumber um, and I'm too tired to do anything else. So I figured I would just update you guys on this book, Bedhead and All. So I'm actually, enjoying this one a lot more than I anticipated. You know, because it is YA and I don't read a lot of YA, I was really eh about it, but it reminds me a lot of the Amanda Knox case, if you follow true crime at all. Uh, and if you haven't seen the Amanda Knox documentary on Netflix, I highly recommend it. It's basically about a girl who is studying abroad in Italy and her roommate is murdered and she's suspected and they arrest her and she like has to stay in Italy in like a prison for like years. But um, not saying that's exactly what happens in this book. But yeah, it's like giving me those vibes because this group of teenagers is in Aruba and their friend's dead and they're suspected. So yeah, this book, I'm really enjoying it. Not only does it read kind of like true crime, but it has that element of like adolescent teenagers are involved and they're so naive and it's like that thing of you can see something coming and you're like, oh honey, no, that was a bad move or you're so dumb or like, oh no, this is coming. Like, you know, this is gonna happen, right? and they just don't see it and then it hits and it's like it breaks your heart because they don't see it coming and 
I don't know. It's just making me think about the stupid stuff I did when I was a teenager and how everyone around me probably saw it coming before it hit me. Um, so there's that. But yeah, it's making me think. It's making me emotional. I feel really drawn and attracted to the characters. Like, I'm really, really rooting for these stupid teenagers. I'm really rooting for them, especially our main character. I'm getting really attached to her. And, um... It's making me very, like, emotionally invested. Oh. It's making me very emotionally invested. Sorry, you can hear Boba jingling in the background. But yeah, um, I'm at the halfway point right now. And who knows how much I'll get to read while I'm waiting for the plumber. <laughs> Boba, what do you think of the book? <laughs> So I am about a hundred pages from the end. I am really enjoying this. I am really rooting for our main character and I think I'm going to finish this. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I really needed this after the last book, which was kind of boring. Okay, hello. I finished I'll Never Tell by Abigail Haas while waiting for my plumber who never showed. So. Still got a hole in my wall, but the good news is I finished this book and I loved it. I ended up giving it four and a half stars. I think this might be the best YA mystery thriller that I've ever read. It is very good. It makes you extremely emotional. You get very attached to the characters. You are rooting for your main character like no other. The group of teenagers that the story is based around, they're very dangerous, thrilling. It seems like a movie. They're doing all of these things that, you know, could look one way in this light and another way in another point of view. Like, everything can be misconstrued and is misconstrued and even though there are parts of this book that take place in the trial the actual murder trial um it never drags like some adult courtroom thrillers can sometimes do um it reminds me of sadie in the way that it it kind of breaks things down like um how sadie did it in the format of a podcast this takes the court like closing statements and puts it in like a transcript um kind of format they also do that with like they have a nancy grace type show going on uh with the coverage of the trial which really mirrors amanda knox and i wonder if the story was at all inspired by the amanda knox case kind of seems like it was um but the transcripts from like the nancy grace interviews are done that way so it, it's quick it's fast paced it's easy to digest i flew through this book and yeah i highly recommend it if you like thrillers or if you're just getting into thrillers and you like kind of a salacious contemporary about teenage drama i feel like you would really like this and yeah, I only knocked off half a star because I could kind of see where it was going at some parts just because I'm a very seasoned thriller reader. So I usually make predictions and they usually end up being right. It's very rare that I cannot predict the ending of a thriller. So yeah, that's why I knocked off half a star for that. And also, I just feel like it's very heavily inspired by Amanda Knox. So, I don't know. That's just speculation. I have no idea. This is all alleged. I'm not making any claims. But yeah, I really highly recommend this book. Interesting thing. There's nothing about this title <laughs> that was significant to the book at all. I actually realized when I was looking on Goodreads that the title of this book changed halfway through publication. So it was originally entitled uh, Dangerous Girls and then Abigail Haas, I guess, who's the author, which this is also a pseudonym and she's written other adult books under a different pseudonym. The story keeps getting crazier. Um, she changed the name from Dangerous Girls to I'll Never Tell. So obviously the title doesn't have any great significance because it was changed. So I don't know, maybe this was a failed experiment. Um, 
Neither of these books have too much in common other than the fact that they're thrillers and they're based around a best friend being found dead. Um, one is adult, one is YA, one was super boring, one was super fast paced. Take your pick. I hope you had fun watching this video even though there's no kind of profound conclusion about books with the same name. Uh, I can definitely do this type of video again though if you enjoyed it let me know in a comment down below and that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one. Bye.